So this week is gonna be sort of more chill sketch with me sort of video just because I thought that, that would be fun and this week's video is also going to be more, you know, real time which I haven't really done these just because I, I mean I think I'm fast at drawing but the videos themselves because of the particular things that I'm usually drawing they wind up being really long. Like, this one, the video was actually about 50 minutes long with all just the raw footage, and I managed to cut it down to around like 35-36 minutes, but that's still a kind of a long time. So I don't think the voiceover is going to go through the whole video, like I think towards the middle I'm probably going to have like a little break and let you guys just kind of chill out and watch me sketch real time, but I mean, I have cut out some little bits here and there just for like the parts where I take my pencil off and I'm just staring at it or the parts where I was changing the music I was listening to and all that, but so just just for my editing's sake, I'm not gonna talk the whole video, I don't think. Basically that's the point I'm trying to get at here. And also the voiceover you may notice isn't as spliced together and edited as I usually do, but that's also just to sort of fit the mood of the video. I've always enjoyed watching videos like this while I work, so I thought that I might make something that other people would like to watch while they work. So in the video I decided that I would be drawing three of my characters from my comic Aces in just little well, Halloween costumes, nothing too over the top or anything like that, just characters that I feel like kind of suit them. And so I'm drawing Clay, Sue, and Quentin. And I'm tempted to have you guess who they're, you know, dressed as, but I don't think I'm gonna do that just just because I want to talk about the characters and stuff that I chose and why I chose them. So Clay, as you can see me drawing here, is actually going as Jim Hawkins from Treasure Planet, and Treasure Island is one of my favorite books, and Treasure Planet is one of my favorite movies, so I just really, really liked it. And the thing is, I tried to choose costumes that sort of suit the character, but at the same time they don't, because Jim is sort of, part of his thing is that he's, you know, a troubled kid, and the movie is about him sort of figuring himself out and getting past being so moody all the time. Like, that's still kind of his personality, but, you know. Clay, on the other hand, is not moody. He's just kinda... he's shy and he's quiet. And so that doesn't really suit him that much. And like, I don't feel like their stories are that similar, but I just felt like it worked for some reason. And I just kinda wanted to draw more in Jin's outfit. And I tried to cut out a lot of the bits where I was erasing and like flicking my hand over the page just because I do that a lot, like kind of excessively. And it, <laughs> I'll be honest, when I'm watching back through the footage, it annoys me how much I do it. Like I didn't realize I flicked it that much. That's just over the top. Like what am I doing? I'm brutalizing the paper in my lines. Like what am I doing? <laughs> the jacket was kind of difficult to draw at parts, but it was really fun. And I kind of wanted to do full body drawings just because I really liked the shoes that all the characters were wearing. But at the same time, just for, you know, time constraints, I didn't want to do full body drawings. So. I decided against it and it's kind of like weird cut off at the thighs, but it's just a sketch. It's not a finished piece or anything like that, so it doesn't really matter too much. And one thing you'll see me struggle with a lot here is Clay's face, actually, and I don't know why I was having such a hard time with it. I think part of it is that I sort of have slightly different workflows for Aces and the Heyday Kids, and I, I'm more on, like, the Heyday Kids 
mood right now and I feel like the way I draw the characters I'm just more suited to drawing the characters in the Heyday Kids right now and I go through this adjustment period every time I switch between the two projects where I have to sort of get reacquainted with how I draw each character's face and like I wouldn't say that they have like really different styles because both comics are done in my art style but at the same time, there is kind of a style difference, and I'm not sure how or why. <laughs> but I spent all this time, like, getting into the sharp details of the face and stuff, and then I, I go back in and I erase basically the whole face repeatedly and redraw it. Like, it wasn't terrible, it just wasn't jiving with me, so. I'm thinking sometime in the near future I'm gonna want to draw some of the characters from Treasure Planet and I'm not sure if I'll record it, but I'll try. But like, I just love all the characters in that movie so much. And I watched the movie really recently and it made me remember why I love it so much. And I'm really just in the mood, you know? It was always a shame to me that that movie kind of bombed, but... Like, it just, it did. There's nothing to be done about that, but that doesn't change the fact that it was a great movie. I'm gonna just stop waxing on about how much I love Treasure Planet now, because that, that could be a whole video in itself. And if I do make a video out of drawing the Treasure Planet characters, that's basically all it's gonna be. <laughs> I'll try to make it, you know, about the process and stuff, but let's, let's be honest, it's mostly gonna be me talking about why I like the movie, but I was really happy with how Clay's hair came out, so that's a nice thing. And it was one of the easier parts, except for his little tufty in the back. I wasn't happy with that the first time I drew it, so I had to go back over it immediately. And I considered giving Clay like the little ponytail braid thing that Jim has, but I was like, no, I'm just gonna give him his regular hair. I don't want him to look too much like he's trying to be Jim, and his hair is not that long, so. Now I'm moving on to drawing Sue, and I don't know why, but I chose to draw her as Violet from The Incredibles, and it's kind of weird because, again, she's not like Violet at all. Like, Violet is known for being kind of moody and just... She's got some attitude problems, but Sue is actually like a really diplomatic and honest person. And I don't, like, I feel like drawing her as Elastigirl or Mrs. Incredible would have actually made more sense, but at the same time I didn't want to do that because she's known for being the mom, and Sue is not the mom. Like, she's sort of more matronly at times. Like, not like matronly, if that makes sense, but she she looks after everyone mostly because if they need to go to the hospital, she has the money to pay for their hospital bills. <laughs> but, so she's just, she's more mother-like in that sense. It's not that she's, she seems older than she is, but she is one of the oldest of the kids. And I mean, to be fair, I was drawing them when they were older, so. But, like, I could have drawn her as Elastigirl, because, like, with all, like, the flashback parts at the beginning of the first Incredibles movie, like, I just, I don't know, my choices were weird, but I also just really wanted to draw the particular outfit. And to be fair, now that I'm thinking about it, they are basically the same costume, like for Violet and Mrs. Incredible, it's almost the exact same costume, but Violet has the headband, and I gave, I gave Sue the headband, but like, it could kind of go either way, like we could just say that I drew her as a last girl, Mrs. Incredible, and honestly it doesn't matter what you say, I'm just, I don't know why I keep correcting myself, it's basically exactly the same. But she became Mrs. Incredible when she got married, so whatever. 
The logo was fun to draw, but I kind of messed it up in a few little places, but let's just ignore that. Like, the lines were a little weird. And I don't think it's that I messed it up exactly, it's just that I didn't clean it up very much, and that was where it started looking weird. One thing that really tripped me up was not drawing eyebrows, because under the mask, you can't see their eyebrows, it's just their eyes. And so I kept looking at the face and I'm like, this looks wrong, this is wrong, what did I do? And I'm like, well no, it's, that's how it's supposed to look, but it's, you don't see the eyebrows. And I was so tempted to go for like, you know, in classic comic books and actually a lot of modern comic books still, how they'll sometimes draw the character's eyebrows over the costume. I was so tempted to do that, but I decided not to and to just stick with the character that I was supposed to be drawing her as and be more realistic in that regard that you wouldn't see the eyebrows. And next I went on to Quentin, who I was going to draw him dressing as Ben 10, because personality-wise, I feel like they're kind of similar at times. But then I remembered that for Inktober in 2016, I did a Halloween illustration of these three. And in that illustration, I drew Quentin as Ben 10. And I was like, I don't want to draw him as the same costume again. I, I think I'm going to do a different character. And I was like, well, who should I draw him as? And I was going through all the different characters that I felt like kind of suited him, and you know who I landed on? Generator X from Generator X. And that's kind of funny to me because they're both made, both Ben 10 and Generator X are made by Man of Action, and they literally had crossovers with each other. So, I mean, I'm still not that far off from Ben 10, but anyways, I do feel like both Ben 10 and Generator X kind of suit Quentin, just based off of personality, powers, and stuff. Possibly Generator X more so, because, you know, Rex has the nanites and stuff, and has control over some technology and things like that, and that's sort of Quentin's ballgame, whatever. And, um... I said ballgame. I meant ballpark. Way to go me with my references and phrases. Wait. Anyways. I would say that I'm probably most happy with the Sue, maybe, but I'm actually really happy with all three of them, and that's kind of nice, because usually when I draw group shots, there's at least one character where I look at it, I'm like, Ooh, I want to redraw that, and I didn't have that this time, so that's really nice. In case you're wondering, the supplies that I'm using are a 4H Kuinor pencil, and I'm just using like a You Create sketchbook that I got for Christmas last year. I'm pretty sure that you can get these at like Walmart and stuff, and I actually did a What I Got for Christmas video last year, or yeah, it was last year, it was last December. Um, for some reason I was thinking it went up in January, but no, it came out right after Christmas. And um, I actually mentioned the sketchbook in that video, so if you want to kind of hear more of my thoughts on it, I will try to link that video down below. And, but I really like this sketchbook. It's almost full, and it's almost all unfinished pieces, so I kind of want to go in and fix that. But I decided to sketch it in that sketchbook just because I wanted to draw in an actual sketchbook, but all my literal, my littler ones are pretty much completely full, and so that always happens to me this time of year, because I get a couple sketchbooks for my birthday and then maybe for Christmas and stuff, and by the time summer comes around, I usually finish those, or I'm partway through them, and I'll get another, and then by the time we get to like October, November, I have used all my sketchbooks up, 
And my family has this rule that whenever it's a month away from your birthday or Christmas, you're not allowed to buy anything just to prevent the dreaded you buying the thing that they got you problem. And my birthday is in December. And so as soon as November hits, I'm not allowed to buy anything. I mean, I can buy some stuff as long as it's not like a gift item for myself sort of thing. But that's just, it always gets to this time of the year and I'm like, I need a new sketchbook. And my dad's like, dude, your birthday's coming up. You can't buy that. And he usually lets me buy at least one. But he always has that little discussion with me about like, wait, that's a gift item. You shouldn't get that for yourself. Let someone else get that for you because you're gonna get like multiple sketchbooks for your birthday anyways, because that's something that everyone gets every artist. And I saw this little comic a while back about someone getting sketchbooks for Christmas or whatever. And they're like, oh, I'll just put them with all the others. And then they put a, um, put another sketchbook on this huge shelf full of empty sketchbooks and I'm like, what? Because every time I've gotten a sketchbook, I'm always super excited and for my last birthday, I literally got three sketchbooks and I used them all up by the beginning of spring pretty much. And I've never understood the whole getting sketchbooks and never using them thing because I just fly through sketchbooks. And I know that everyone works in different ways, and a lot of people like to work on loose sheets of paper just because they're easier to scan. But at the same time, why would you not use a sketchbook? Like, they're really nice to actually have a lot of paper whenever you're traveling and stuff and going out and about. So that just never made sense to me. <laughs> Anyways, that was a whole tangent. And I forgot kind of where I was going with that, but hopefully I made my point somewhere in there. And now what I'm doing in the video is going back over all the lines and cleaning them up a bit and darkening them using a, um, an HB Artist Loft pencil. And I got this in a set a while back and the quality on these pencils is kind of spotty, but the HB one actually works really well. And I was considering using just like an HB mechanical pencil because I like how those work too but you can't get a super fine line with them, and at least when it's in a wood core pencil, or a wood pencil, not wood core, what am I saying? At least when it's in a wood pencil, you're able to sharpen it to a nice point, and that's one of the things that I need whenever I'm doing line art with a pencil like this. Like what I'm doing with the Heyday Kids right now is basically the exact same process that I did for this drawing is sketching lightly with a 4H and then going over it and darkening and detailing with a, an HB or some dark pencil. And so I'm actually really happy that I have this little pencil here and the quality on this one is a lot more consistent than the others. Like the H pencils in the set, it's like H through H4 and the quality on those is kind of really inconsistent and you'll get these random little really dark specks that don't erase. But I think that just sort of comes with the territory of that these are artist loft pencils and those are known for being more of a budget brand. And I'm not saying that all their stuff is bad, I'm just saying that budget brands do certain supplies better. And with their pencils, they seem to do better with the darker ones. There's not too much to talk about with this part now, just because I'm just going through refining the lines, like I said.
And so there, I just finished up Clay and I move on to doing Sue. And she was a lot of fun to do just because she has such flowy hair. And it's nice and wavy and a fun texture to draw. And so, that was just... <sighs> I decided that I would go ahead and kind of add like lashes, eyeliner, or whatever in the corners of her eyes, even though you kind of wouldn't be able to see that just because of the mask, like I discussed earlier with the eyebrows and everything like that. But I just, I added it anyway, because I mean, with the way I was going to be doing the shines, it, it was going to work fine, and it just felt weird to not do it. <laughs> lining with a darker softer pencil but I just I think that I needed the sharper lines that an HB would offer over any sort of darker pencil and I just I feel like you can't sharpen B pencils as well as you can an HB pencil like they're not that much different but I'm just more used to working with HB because that's what I grew up drawing with so comes the fun part of filling in all the darker areas and like I felt like I knew I was doing with the mask but at the same time I was just kind of winging it as I went and I was pretty happy with it but it's definitely not the same texture as Violet's mask so I'm just gonna brush that off to be like oh yeah it's a kind of more of a homemade costume even though Sue is a she's a, an actress and could afford a really 
nicely made costume. Oh well, let's, let's just pretend that, okay? <laughs> filling in all these parts on Sue is just really satisfying to watch back over and I'm not sure why. I think it's just that it makes it look really more finished than like it's supposed to. of her boots so I just go in and sketch those in really quickly and I didn't really do the same detail of rendering on the boots as I did for like the weird torso stuff <laughs> I don't know but like the gloves and the mask and stuff got a lot more careful of rendering than the boots did this these just kind of got scribbles because I I don't know I didn't feel like messing with it Now moving on to Quintana's. It was fun because he's always got like this really optimistic look or at least he usually does. And it's just really fun to draw. Another reason that I thought that I should do him as Generator X is just because of the goggles. Because Quentin always wears his goggles and I considered having him just wear his own goggles for the costume, but I was like, meh, I'll just, I'll do Generator X's goggles. And just, just to do the whole costume. And I'm planning on doing another sort of video like this for doing the main four kids of the Heyday Kids wearing costumes. But I don't know if it's going to be like a super long real-time video like this one, just because of time constraints. <laughs> because this takes, this video at least, took a really long time to edit and also to just export, upload, all that stuff. It's a big video. And so if I get a stronger computer and better internet in the future, I'd love to do more videos like this. But for now, it'll probably be more like vloggy, shorter videos and time lapses and stuff. Digital videos are a bit easier to edit just for some particular reasons. And also that the video files are a lot smaller. So 
I might do more lengthy digital ones, and like if you guys would like to see like a full-time digital drawing or something like that, I'd be happy to do something like that for you. But for now, full length, you know, real time traditional videos are <laughs> probably off the table. It was so weird drawing Quentin's hair flip back like that just because that's what Rex's hair kind of looks like. Like Rex's whole head of hair is flipped back, but I decided to keep Quentin's little in front of the ears tufts and his little fringe, but I just I felt like behind the goggles should be flipped back and it's actually pretty cute, but <laughs> it's just weird to draw my characters with different hairstyles. Even though some of them do actually get different hairstyles later on in the series, it's just weird to draw them with different hairstyles that aren't actually going to be canon. shading on the pants which most of it gets kind of covered up later or in just a second because I decided to go ahead and fill in all the pants darker colored because Rex's pants are they're black with like light blue detailing. I spent a lot longer on doing those pants than I thought I did. And thus, that is the end of this installment of a Sketch With Me video. Hopefully you'll come by next time for next week's video, or this Wednesday's video, whatever happens. And I just want to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye! God bless! Links to all my stuff are down in the description. Bye.